our meeting shortly. So we would like to invite all of you to take your seats. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to Bali, Indonesia for the high-level leaders meeting on global multi-stakeholder collaboration for achieving a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace, enabling growth and sustainable development through cyber ethics on 21st October 2013. This high-level leaders meeting on global multi-stakeholder collaboration for achieving a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace, enabling growth and sustainable development through cyber ethics, will be chaired by Mr. Ashwin Sasonko, Director General of ICT Application from the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology of the Republic of Indonesia, and Mr. Kalamula Ramli, Senior Advisor for Technology to the Minister of Communication and Information Technology of the Republic of Indonesia. Chairs, the floor is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Swastiastu. Peace and prosperity to all of us. Excellencies, distinguished participants, Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me welcome you all to Bali. Today, we will start the high-level leaders' meeting together and discuss wide range of issues on cyberspace to give more benefit for all society. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, cyberspace has presented opportunities for development in many aspects of life. It has generated valuable contributions to its billion users and produced growth and economic development. However, the rapid expansion of technology and cyberspace may create challenges with threatened individuals, societies, and even nations, and may lead to tensions and eventually conflicts. It is in this context, promotion and impl implementation of privacy, respect for cultural and traditional values become more and more relevant to address, particularly when it touches national sovereignty and protection of public interest. While recognizing a wider spectrum of cyberspace on freedom of expression, Individuals, peoples, communities, and nations, we need an essential value of respect and tolerance in achieving a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace. For that purpose, today we conduct high-level leaders' meeting at the team Global Multi-Stakeholder Collaborations for Achieving a Safe, Secure, and Tolerant Cyberspace, enabling growth and sustainable development through cyber ethics. To have an in-depth discussion involving all interest stakeholders to inform to initiate a global actions. We all together need to act and establish common values to build a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace based on a common cyber ethics that respect every stakeholder's interest. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, our agenda today will consist of three sessions. The first one is the opening speech from the Minister of CIT Indonesia will be followed by two remarks from the UN Department of Economics and Social Affairs and from the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. After the remarks, we will have the main team presentation from Indonesia National ICT Council. The second session is a panel session. In this panel session, certain panelists will be invited to give comments, to give their contributions concerning the theme of the high-level leaders' meeting from the floor. The panelists are from the government of UK, US, Japan, Brazil, China, Azerbaijan. And after the comments from the governments, we also will invite companies from Telkom Indonesia and Google as representative of private sector to give comments and their contributions. Then we'll continue our panel sessions with comments from ISOC and APNIC as representative from internet communities. Finally, we would conclude our second sessions with comments from Citizens Lab, Internet Democracy and Diplo Foundations and representative of civil society organizations. Due to the limited time, panelists hopefully can deliver their comments and contributions in around five minutes to give their contributions. The third session is a plenary discussion, which will be chaired by my colleague, Professor Kalamullah Ramli. In this session, all participants will be invited to contribute or 
in case you would like to ask something, you can raise your questions. Now I would like to start the first sessions by inviting His Excellency, Mr. Tifato Sembiring, the Minister of Communication and Information Technology, Republic of Indonesia, to the podium to give the opening speech. Your Excellency, please. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace and prosperity to us all. His Excellency Mr. Ed Faizer, MP, Minister for Culture, Communication and Creative Industries of United Kingdom. His Excellency Mr. Ali Abbasov, Minister of CIT Azerbaijan. His Excellency Mr. Paulo Bernardo Silva, Minister of ICT Brazil. His Excellency Mr. Masahiro Yoshizaki, Vice Minister for Policy, Coordination, Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communication, Japan. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased and honored to welcome you to Indonesia and especially to the beautiful island Bali. Indonesia is an archipelagic state which comprises more than 17,000 islands, 34 provinces, with hundreds of native ethnics and languages. Bali is a famous island, but I can assure you that you can find many islands in Indonesia as beautiful as Bali. We all present here to attend the high-level leaders' meeting on global multi-stakeholder collaboration for achieving a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace, enabling growth and sustainable development through cyberspace. Today, I see many, many actors who have a significant role in establishing and developing cyberspace on Internet, governments and regulators, Internet service providers, private sectors, non-governmental organizations, academicians, and experts in information and communication technology as the panelists and participants of this meeting. Therefore, I am certain that from multi-stakeholders perspectives, we would produce comprehensive and beneficial outcomes for the interests of all stakeholders. Communication is one fundamental need of humankind. It is our nature to communicate with others with all available means of communication. Technologies also give birth to cyberspace. Cyberspace is not only a virtual borderless space, borderless space that created from the fusion of information and communication technologies but also has become our new common environment, our global virtual market, in where global communities live and communicate, and where people can transact products, of which more and more are transubstantiated into digital form. Now we live, we communicate, we transact both in real space and cyberspace, we understand that there is huge difference between real space and cyberspace. We believe that in cyberspace, just like in real world, people need norms of interactions. Further, many activities in cyberspace can have legal consequences in real space. Therefore, we need technology and norms to maintain sustainability, stability, security, and robustness of the cyberspace. Ladies and gentlemen, to manage virtual and borderless cyberspace, we need norms that beyond national laws and legislations as an essential foundation to establish an acceptable norms for all in cyberspace. We should reaffirm Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and 
expression that this right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. Communication is a fundamental social process, a basic human need and the foundation of all social organization. We also should reaffirm, reaffirm our responsibility in cyberspace as defined on the Article 29 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that everyone has duties to the community in which allowed the free and full development of their personality and that in the exercise of their rights and freedoms, everyone shall be subject only to such limitations as are determined solely by law for the purpose of securing due recognition and respect for the rights and freedoms of others and meet the just requirements of morality, public order, and the general welfare in democratic society. In this way, we shall promote of we shall promote an information society where human dignity is respected. These two-sided coin principles that on one side we should protect and foster freedom of speech and expression and on the other side that we have responsibility to our communities securing due recognition and respect for the rights and freedoms of others and meets the just requirements of morality, public order and the general welfare in a democratic society are embedded in Indonesia constitution. We believe that exercising our fundamental rights must be in line with our responsibility in protecting other rights. Our country believes that the extensive of use of ICT and the distribution of its contents as the manifestation means of freedom of speech and freedom of expression should respect as well fundamental freedoms of others. In this sense, we as global community should accept that each country might have its own values and needs which are specific to its local societies and local wisdoms. The development of mutual understanding that we are fostering among global communities should consider the diversity of values and wisdom between countries. Ladies and gentlemen, we also believe that a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace would enhance civilization for current generation and future generations as the future workforce and leading creators and early adopters of ICTs. We are fully aware to potential threats from misuse of ICTs, which can adversely affect the integrity of infrastructure and applications, cause detrimental effect on people's welfare, security and stability, both in national and international levels. Therefore, to build and develop a safe cyberspace for all it requires national, regional and international and multi-stakeholders collaboration and cooperation as well as holistic approaches. Government, civil society, private sector and international organizations have an important role, contribution and responsibility in the development of a safe environment of cyberspace to facilitate the implementation of ICTs in various aspects of life around the globe and to protect public interest from any threats as a result of misuse of ICTs. Ladies and gentlemen, the role of ethics in cyberspace is getting more crucial now than ever. Regarding this issue, I would like to reiterate the importance of cyber ethics as enshrined in United Nations Digital Millennium that cyber ethics can be developed from our common 
fundamental values that are essential to international relations in the 21st century. Ladies and gentlemen, therefore, Indonesia propose that we, as one global community, acknowledge cyber ticks as norms of transactions and norms of living in cyberspace that based on mutual respect of interest. These norms provide the basis for all stakeholders to conduct transactions and interactions in cyberspace. Cybertics complement national laws and regulations. Cyber ethics would become common guidelines for global communities to respond to ethical issues. For that, it is important to have strong commitment from all stakeholders to establish cyber ethics that would enhance our efforts in pursuing our common goal, a safer cyberspace for our people, for our family, and for our children. Usually, I begin my speech with a traditional poem, but it is difficult to create in English version. But I try this. Ikan hiu beli es putar. Thank you and see you later. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, His Excellency Mr. Tifatul Sembiring for the opening speech and of course for the Indonesian English poem. <laughs> From the speech, it is noted the role and urgency of cyber ethics to support sustainable development of a safe and secure cyberspace. It is also noted that it is important to have a strong commitment from all stakeholders to pursue our common goal, a safer cyberspace. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to invite Mr. Thomas Gass, Assistant Undersecretary General for the Coordination of Political and International Affairs in the UN Department of Economics and Social Affairs, UNDISA, on behalf of the UN, to the podium and to give his remarks. <coughs> Mr. Gass, please. Distinguished uh, co-chairs, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin by thanking our hosts, the government of Indonesia, and particularly the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology for convening this high-level leaders' meeting. Uh, Mr. Wu Hongbo, the Undersecretary General for Economic and Social Affairs of the United Nations, is honored to have been asked to attend this important event. Mr. Wu, however, regrets that he cannot be with us. He has been asked to represent the Secretary General at another Congress. However, I am honored to attend on his behalf. I look forward to fruitful discussions today and throughout the 8th IGF, and I will brief him on our deliberations. Now I will, if you allow me, present some brief remarks by Mr. Wu, and I quote. Our theme today is global multi-stakeholder collaboration for achieving a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace, enabling growth and sustainable development through cyber ethics. Last week, I participated in the 2013 Seoul Conference on Cyberspace where I shared a vision for the future. This vision for cyberspace included harnessing information and communication technologies and the internet for accelerating the progress on millennium development goals and the post-2015 development agenda. Cyberspace has a critical role to play in improving the lives of all, particularly the most vulnerable, beyond the target dates of the world's historic Millennium Declaration. This vision is directly linked to not only the Seoul Conference theme, which was a global prosperity through an open and secure cyberspace, opportunities, threats, and cooperation. It is also linked to the theme of the 8th IGF, building bridges, enabling multi-stakeholder cooperation for growth and sustainable development. And one could say this is an ends-based approach 
to cyber ethics, which is, an import, which is as important as the means-based approach to cyber ethics, one that concerns Internet governance. The member states of the United Nations gathered in Rio de Janeiro last year for the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, Rio Plus 20. Together with their global partners, they identified economic, social and environmental as the three main pillars of sustainable development. To realize the potential for growth and sustainable development, the international community needs to consider ethical principles to achieve safety, security and tolerance in cyberspace. About safety, we agree that citizens of all countries should feel as safe in the online world as they do in the offline. Public policies for cyberspace should be grounded in creating an online world that is free of criminal activity and malicious attacks. There needs to be a fundamental safeguard to protect the safety of all who inhabit the virtual space. On security, I have no doubt that the multi-stakeholder community will, deliberate, will de deliberate where to find the right balance between individual freedom of expression and collective security. It will find common ground on some basic internet governance principles that will assure an open but secure cyberspace. The IGF, again this year, is the ideal platform to allow all stakeholders... Paragraph 39 of the Tunis Agenda points out the necessity to further promote, develop and implement, in cooperation with all stakeholders, a global culture of cybersecurity as outlined in United Nations General Assembly Resolution 57 239 and other re relevant regional frameworks. This culture requires national action and increased international cooperation to strengthen... Ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite to the podium our next speaker, Mr. Fadi Chihari from ICANN, to give his remarks. Mr. Fadi Chihari, please. Your Excellencies and all the excellent ladies and gentlemen here, good morning. It is such a pleasure to be in Bali. Um, I want to personally thank Minister Tifatul for his welcoming and his team that has done a remarkable job for us here. Thank you very much. We come together at a very special time. I look at the term cyberspace, and I think the term should be put to bed. There is no more cyberspace. There is one space. It's the space we live in. In Dubai, I was watching plants using the internet to call for water. In Los Angeles, parking spaces Tell your GPS when they're empty. The world that we live in is now the cyber world. There is no difference. And therefore, the cyber world that has now been merged into our real world needs to become central to our thinking, to our planning together. It is no longer a sideshow. It is no longer a virtual world. It is now where we all live. The internet has brought tremendous value to all of us, economic value. It brought human development. It brought free expression. It brought creativity and innovation. And it continues to bring peace. And I say peace, yes, because so much divides us. But the internet brings us together. So many things are barriers between us and other humans. The internet, through understanding, through education, removes these barriers. The internet is a good force, and it's a force we should safeguard. In the last few months, things happened 
that started making the public less trusting of the internet. That's not good. It's not good. Because the public trust in the internet is extremely important. If we as a humanity start doubting that medium and its value, we take away something very important. Therefore, we come together in Bali to safeguard this trust. Each one of us here should consider oneself a public steward of this trust, a public trustee to serve the users and the consumers who look at many of us here, governments, technical organizations, civil society, and businesses who serve us. We're all in this room and we're all together, equal stewards of the public trust in the internet. Now, how do we do that? Where do we go from here? This week in Bali, we have a unique opportunity to start finding a new way to cooperate. We have seen movements by some governments, organizations, such as the Montevideo Statement, the technical organizations also made recently, movement towards a new way of cooperation, an open, transparent, democratic, equal way of cooperation, where everyone has a voice, where the only goal is to maintain the public trust in the Internet. So I, on behalf of all of us in this room, invite us together to talk, to collaborate, to cooperate. We have a whole week to do that, to be open, to listen to each other, and to consider all points of view on how we can build together an Internet where we are all equal in its cooperation and its governance. Particularly today, I'd like to welcome the civil society members who are in the room. Uh, many of you have come to the IGF for years and have energized this process. We join you, governments, businesses, organizations, to energize the cooperation between us. And I emphasize energize cooperation, not change what we do, not change the organizations and the institutions that have served us well, but rather to build and evolve them and bring them to a new place where we can together address all the issues that are left on the table. Today's high-level meeting focuses on ethics. There are many other issues that have been left orphaned on the table. It is time to address them through the models of multi-stakeholder cooperation that all of us emphasize. They do not erase existing models. They support them, they enhance them, they energize them. So let's do it together. We have an opportunity this week in good faith and in good will to do it. And once again, thank you, Minister Tifatou. Salam alaikum. Thank you, Mr. Fadi, for the remarks regarding the internet development in the world. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, our high-level leaders meeting uphold the team global multi-stakeholder collaborations for achieving a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace, enabling growth and sustainable development through cyber ethics. In order to have more comprehensive information of the team, I would like to invite to the podium Professor Zainal Hasibuan, the Vice Executive Chairman of the National ICT Council of Indonesia, to deliver his presentation of the team. Mr. Hasibuan, please. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of us. Allow me to start the discussion with our main theme in IGF 2013. The slide, please.
నెక్స్ట్ నెక్స్ట్ ఓకే ఎస్ వి ఆల్ నో నౌ వి లివ్ ఇన్ ద గ్లోబల్ ఫిలిజ్ ఎస్ ద ప్రీవియస్ స్పీకర్ మెన్షన్ ఆల్సో టు ద లోకల్ రూట్స్ ద వర్డ్ మూవ్ టు అవర్ ఫింగర్ టిప్స్ నెక్స్ట్ internet bring us to open world and also to the local route that makes us so diverse with internet we go global but at the same token we seek our original we seek our old friends we make new friends next we are connected to each other what good for us may be not good for others we think we want to inform others instead we hurt others we think we deploy knowledge instead we destroy others we are connected to each other next globalization changes our living globalization changes our living style we compete at the same token we also collaborate but we have to respect the norms and ethics next the potential chaos is high not only among countries and stakeholders but also within a country and its stakeholders We don't want this global feelings become chaotic due to the advance of ICT. Next. Threat to a country's security and sovereignty are growing. Not only logical attacks, physical attack, but also social and cultural attacks that can destroy generation and also next generation we need to protect and secure our asset our social life and our culture next hence we have to cultivate the global world but maintain local one next this respected igf high level leaders meeting forum should lead the transformation world to a safe secure and tolerant cyberspace for enabling growth and sustainable development thank you very much thank you professor hasibwal for your clear description of the team it is noted that this respected forum should lead the transformation of the world to a safe secure and tolerant not only in the real space but also in cyberspace for enabling growth and sustainable development ladies and gentlemen this team presentation completed our first sessions before going to next sessions as a remembrance of the meeting his excellency mr tifatul sombiring would like to invite his fellow ministers from uk brazil and japan also accompanied by mr gas from un desa and mr fadi from i can to take a group uh, photo you are all invited to uh, stand in front of the desk for the group photo thank you yeah azerbaijan yeah and also our fellow is from azerbaijan
Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Next, according to our agenda, we will move to the second sessions. In this session, we will have certain panelists to contribute, respond, and give comments concerning team presentations. Achieving a safe and secure cyberspace and emerging issues. It would be the high-level leaders meeting of interest of concerns. And it's truly a great opportunity for all of us to have these three panelists that could enrich our horizon concerning the role and urgency of this issue in this meeting. Due to our limited time, you are requested to finalize the comments in round five to seven minutes. For the first panelist, I would like to give the floor to the Minister of Culture, Communications, and Creative Panelists of the United Kingdom. It's actually Mr. Ed Fessy. You are kindly invited to give your comments, and the floor is yours. Thank you uh, very much. It wasn't clear whether I was going to speak from the desk or from the podium, but I've chosen to speak from the podium. But I don't want to set a precedent. If you want to speak uh, from your desk, Minister, please do. Uh, could I thank Minister Titafor for um, hosting today's, uh, this week's conference. Uh, I'd like to thank him and his ministry, the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, for hosting what I think is going to be uh, a fantastic event. It's a pleasure to be back in Bali. It's a pleasure to be in Indonesia, which is such an astonishing country uh, and which has achieved such significant economic growth uh, over the last uh, decade or so, uh, and also a country that has put uh, information technology at the forefront uh, of its economic development. We are all uh, very aware of how many Indonesians are now on the Internet and using the Internet uh, for social and economic growth. So this is the perfect country in which to have a conference such as this uh, and for all of us to learn from the Indonesian experience. I'm used to saying that if I had a dollar for every person that began their speech saying how central the internet is to ep economic growth, uh, I would be a very rich man and I probably wouldn't be at this conference. I would be sitting on a beach in Bali. Uh, but the reason everyone begins their speech by saying how important the internet is to economic growth is because uh, it is true. It is now absolutely central and countries that are growing significantly are doing so uh, on the back of the internet, not just developed countries but developing countries as well. In the UK we estimate the internet contributes to something like tw uh, about an eighth of our economic growth and that is only going to grow. And we also know that the internet touches every aspect uh, of our lives and it's important as countries that we join up our policies on the internet not just internationally but domestically it affects how we deliver government services it will start to affect how we deliver health services how we deliver education it will affect our relationships uh, in foreign affairs it will start to change social norms uh, and that is why it is very important that we support a multi-stakeholder approach as the internet evolves, we need to hear from everyone and involve everyone, not just governments, but also business and also civic society. Governments may indeed be surprised that business and civic society have ideas and innovations that could be incredibly useful, and it's important that we continue to hear from those voices. I, too, uh, came from the conference in Seoul, uh, where we discussed uh, the future of the Internet. And that conference was important because it complements what happens here at the IGF. It helps us as IT ministers to engage ministers from other parts of our government and in particular to engage foreign ministers. So that is an important and complementary process. But the IGF will give us a good opportunity to debate new models for the Internet, uh, for Internet governance and how they can contribute to economic growth and I hope as well to discuss uh, the effect that too much control may have on stifling the innovation in the internet that we have seen over the last 20 years. But it's important as well as somebody who comes from a developed economy to recognize uh, the impact of the digital divide and I hope the IGF will also look at how we can close the digital divide 
and how wealthy nations can help their neighbors and friends uh, to establish uh, the internet. In that sense, there is a clear role for government. Even in the UK, a developed nation, government still has to play a role in building digital infrastructure, in educating its citizens about the internet, in encouraging people to start to use the internet. And that kind of expertise and experience, we hope, can also be used for developing nations. We in the UK, of course, set great store as well by freedom of expression, and the internet is a vital tool in extending freedom of expression in accordance with the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In the United Kingdom, we take the view that any restriction on freedom of expression must be proportionate, although it must, of course, be balanced with issues to do with privacy and acceptable uh, behaviors. It's clear that a lot remains to do. There's a lot of work ahead to find a global consensus on ways to ensure the future, that the future cyberspace is open and secure. And at the Seoul conference, the UK government shared a paper on next steps, pulling together our planned collective efforts in the coming months. Among other activities, it identified the work of this IGF, the Bali IGF, to collate policy models and best practice, and so help nations develop growth-friendly approaches. We think that all our activity in cyberspace must bear in mind the fundamental goal of the internet, to drive economic growth, the prosperity of our citizens, and social development. And I'm sure that with the support of our Indonesian hosts, this IGF will help us bring us closer to our vision of an internet that is truly transformative for every nation. So I look forward to hearing from all nations and all stakeholders here in Bali about how we can work best together to achieve that. Many thanks. Thank you, Your Excellency, for the contribution of the internet, global internet development. Now I'd like to invite next panelist and our panelists can either can deliver the contribution either from the podium or from your tables, please, uh, on your uh, uh, decisions. For the next panelist, I would like to invite Coordinator for Cyber Issues, Department of State of the United States, Mr. Christopher Painter, to give your contributions on the team presentations. Mr. Painter, you have the floor. Uh, thank you and good morning. Uh, I, I want to thank you, Chairman Sasunko, and also also add my uh, uh, my thanks to uh, Minister Tefutu for all this uh, this organization today and really throughout the week. And I'm going to elect, if you haven't guessed, uh, to talk from here rather than the podium. Although I I very much uh, support what my uh, UK colleague said, I'll do it from my chair instead of from the podium. Um, it is truly a pleasure to join you all in, in beautiful Bali and an honor to take part in this high-level meeting. Uh, as this important meeting is adjacent to uh, the Internet Governance Forum, I think that's very important because although they are distinct meetings, having all of these countries here to discuss these important issues and have them discuss them in each of these forums as a way to mutually reinforce some of these discussions I think is really important. Uh, we have quite a full agenda, so I'm going to focus my remarks this morning on two key areas in which the United States are heavily engaged under uh, the meeting theme of global multi-stakeholder collaboration that address some of the sub-themes in the dialogue today. Uh, first, however, I'd like to introduce my colleague, uh, Danny Sepulveda, our new Ambassador for Communications and Information Policy, who will be joining uh, the discussions both today and throughout the week at the IGF. And we're very privileged also uh, to have a very strong contingent of U.S. government uh, representatives, but also representatives of civil society and the private sector. Uh, second, I should mention that I come, uh, just like uh, Minister Vesey uh, did from Bali, to Bali, directly from Seoul, South Korea, where I was privileged to lead our delegation to the Seoul Conference, uh, the third installment of a conference that began in London, was in Budapest last year, was in Seoul this year, and will be, uh, the next iteration will be uh, hosted by the Dutch in The Hague. Um, this, uh, this conference was very important because it dealt with all the different issues in cyberspace, including uh, social growth, economic benefits, 
uh, cybercrime, cybersecurity, and international security. But importantly, this year, it added another dimension, which is the dimension of capacity building and the importance of capacity building underlying all of those areas in cyberspace, and particularly as a way uh, for the developing world to, uh, to increase its capacity in each of these areas and really join the global conversation as they are this week. Um, the Korean host welcomed more stakeholders this year than ever before from developing countries. They had over 80 countries represented. Uh, they had foreign ministers and vice ministers, uh, approximately 44 of those. And I agree with what uh, uh, Ed Vesey said. It was important to have the perspectives of communication ministers and of foreign ministers, and in some cases interior ministers, and of certainly of the other stakeholders in the societies. Uh, uh, many of the topics uh, in Seoul are obviously very pertinent here, and I think there's a real direct connection between those two processes. Uh, there is a Seoul framework that was released by the, uh, by the organizers in Seoul that included uh, a set of agreed uh, internationally agreed uh, uh, statements or principles, which I commend to everyone in this meeting for further reading. I think it would help our discussions this week. Uh, the sub-themes laid out for this discussion today reflect the breadth and diversity and complexity of cyber issues. And it's not possible, sadly, for any of us to address these in our comments, but hopefully we will uh, throughout both today and this week. Uh, but, uh, but the one area I want to introduce, uh, and the first of the key areas I want to focus on, is the progress in the last year or so that we've made in the pursuit of international consensus on principles that should guide us when we think about some of these issues, particularly in the area of international security. I should first say that the U.S. regards cyberspace as something that is neither owned nor controlled by states. We see states as one of many stewards working to ensure that this resource is available to all of the world's people. Yet in the cyber realm as elsewhere, states do have a special responsibility, working with other stakeholders, both to protect their national security and to promote peaceful and stable relations between themselves and other nations. Uh, that is why uh, uh, promoting cooperation in order to keep the, cyberspace, uh, keep the peace in cyberspace is critically important. Some years ago, the U.S. concluded that the international community needed to strive for a state of what we call international cyber stability. Uh, that's an environment where all states are able to positively and dependably exploit the benefits of cyberspace, uh, where there are benefits to cooperation and to avoiding conflict, and there's little incentive for states to disrupt one another's computer networks or Internet activity. We believe that the appropriate framework for this international stability is to achieve this stability through recognition of international norms and confidence-building measures between countries. The framework of existing international law and norms of acceptable state behavior, which guide states in other contexts, must also apply to cyberspace. Often people think we need a whole new framework to think about cyberspace, and I think that's really wrong. We can use the existing framework for the physical world and apply it to cyberspace. Uh, along with norms, the United States believes that practical operational confidence-building measures are needed to enhance predictability and reduce the risk of conflict or misunderstanding. On June 7th of this year, in the context of the UN group of governmental experts, 15 states, including our hosts and many of the states here today, achieved a groundbreaking consensus report. The group agreed that confidence-building measures, such as high-level communication and timely information sharing, can enhance trust and assurance among states and help reduce the risk of conflict by ensuring predictability and reducing misperception. The group agreed on the vital importance of capacity building to enhance global cooperation in securing cyberspace. The group agreed that state efforts to address the security of ICTs must go hand in hand with respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms set forth in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and other international instruments. And the group reaffirmed the importance of open and accessible cyberspace as it enables economic and social development. And finally, the group agreed that a combination of all these efforts support a more secure cyberspace. Perhaps the most exist uh, the significant single achievement in this consensus was the group's affirmation that existing international law applies to cyberspace. That affirmation was coupled with a consensus that states must meet their international obligations regarding internationally wrongful acts attributable to them, states must not use proxies to commit international wrongful acts, and states should seek to ensure that other territories or that their territories are not used by non-state actors for unlawful use of ICTs. 
It is our expectation that future discussions on these subjects will use the results of this report as the foundation for discussion on how international law applies to cyberspace, how the international community can work with developing states to improve their own capacity, and how to implement specific practical measures to achieve these goals. The U.S. believes that broad recognition of norms will help promote a safer and more secure cyberspace. In particular, the understanding that international law applies to Internet is helpful for the discussion around the second key area here today, the topic of cyber ethics. For the United States, discussion about cyber ethics must begin with a fundamental understanding that human rights apply equally online as they do offline. This principle has been widely recognized by the international community, and in fact, the UN Human Rights Council affirmed this principle by consensus just last year. So further conversations on this topic need to begin by acknowledging the human rights obligations and commitments we each have. Notably, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights does not limit the protections given for expression only to what is termed, quote, ethical, unquote, expression. In contrast, some states try to seek uh, to define, quote, ethical standards to suppress speech they do not agree with. We stress that human rights are universal and do not vary from place to place or from culture to culture, and they are not subject to jurisdictional bubbles around countries. They're universal human rights. Some view network technologies like the Internet as disruptive. Uh, some use the term cybersecurity not in the term I think we all think of it, but as a way to suppress speech. But when, state, when states curtail freedom of expression online in the interest of social stability, they limit their future development. And we've heard about this earlier today. The young people miss out on conversations and debates elsewhere in the world, and they lack exposure to the free inquiry that spurs people to question old ways and doing business and invent new ones and spur innovation. Freedom of thought is part of what fuels economic innovation and growth around the world. In the United States, the ability of citizens to exercise their right to freedom of expression has paid large and, and, and continuing dividends for us. There is a clear connection between our freedom to express our thoughts and our ability to organize our companies and our societies in creative and innovative ways that make us more productive, more efficient, and more prosperous. We can have both security and freedom and prosperity together. All of those are concepts that are important, but they must all coexist. In conclusion, there has been significant progress in forging international consensus on the issues under discussion today. The United States will continue to work with regional and international, with regional uh, and international bodies and collaborate on these key cyberspace activities, including norms, and also areas where capacity building, multi-stakeholderism, and trusts can contribute to the greater international cyber stability, growth, and sustainable development. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. I look forward to the conversations uh, both at the meeting today and throughout the week. Thank you, Mr. Painter, for your valuable comments and contributions. For our next panelist, we would like to invite His Excellency, Mr. Paulo Bernardo Silva, the Minister of Communication from Brazil, to deliver his contributions. Your Excellency, you have the floor, please. Muito obrigado. Em primeiro lugar, meus cumprimentos aos organizadores deste encontro, tão representativo de todos aqueles que pensam e fazem a internet. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I congratulate the organizers of this forum, which is so representative to all those who think and make the internet. Agradeço muito ao governo e ao povo da Indonésia pela excelente acolhida a todos nós e à delegação brasileira. My sincere thanks to the government and people of Indonesia for the warm reception dedicated to the Brazilian delegation. É uma grande satisfação participar deste fórum, debater ideias, trocar experiências e compartilhar visões do mundo em torno do tema da governança da internet. It's a great pleasure to take part in this forum in order to debate ideas, exchange experiences and share our world views regarding internet governance. Consideramos que há uma janela de oportunidade incrível que devemos aproveitar se o que queremos é construir um novo caminho que nos permita materializar todas as infinitas possibilidades da rede mundial, mas com uma gestão verdadeiramente democrática e transparente. We see an incredible window of opportunity that must be taken if we want to build a new way of achieving the endless possibilities of the 
worldwide under a truly democratic and transparent management. A internet não é um fim em si mesma. Ela é um grande instrumento a favor da humanidade e deve ser usada para ajudar o progresso dos povos e das nações. Hoje a internet passou a ser um instrumento cada vez mais fundamental no processo de crescimento em todos os sentidos dos países. Internet is not an end in itself. It is a great instrument in favor of humankind. It must be used to help the development of peoples and nations. And the internet nowadays became a fundamental instrument for the growth of nations in every sense. O seu uso para fins ilegais de obtenção de informações ou para o cerceamento das liberdades fundamentais dos seres humanos, como se observa de maneira cada vez mais frequente, já produz efeitos nefastos sobre a unicidade e globalidade da rede. The employment of the internet for illegal means of obtaining information or in the privation of fundamental liberties of human beings, as we have often seen, produces noxious effects to the unicity and globality of the web. Diante do imenso desafio que é lidar com este tema, nenhum Estado será bem sucedido na administração da internet de forma isolada e clausurada em sua própria perspectiva. Facing the immense challenge of this issue, no state will be successful when it tries to manage the internet in an, in an isolated way according to its sole perspectives. Queremos mudar o atual status quo. Se é verdade que a internet é o lugar onde novas formas de participação democrática são colocadas em prática, acreditamos chegada a hora de agregarmos mais democracia à internet. We have to change the status quo. If the internet is so widely known as a place where new forms of democratic participation is practiced, then I believe it's time we bring more democracy to the internet. Não se sustentam mecanismos e arranjos decisórios exclusivos que não levem outras vozes em consideração. Há muito o Brasil se manifesta nesse sentido. Mechanisms of decision making which do not take other voices into consideration are not sustainable. It has been a long time since Brazil has been talking about it. Buscamos um modelo que reflita os princípios mencionados pela presidenta Dilma Rousseff em seu discurso na Assembleia Geral da ONU neste ano. We, we search for a model that would reflect the principles mentioned by President Dilma Rousseff at the United Nations General Assembly this year. O da liberdade de expressão, privacidade do indivíduo e respeito aos direitos, direitos humanos. Which are freedom of expression, individual privacy and respect for the human rights. O da governança democrática, multilateral e aberta, exercida com transparência, estimulando a criação coletiva e a participação da sociedade, dos governos e do setor privado. Democratic, multilateral and open governance, exercised with transparency, which encourages the collective creation and the participation of society, governments and the private sector. Inclusive, a presidenta Dilma expressamente me orientou para reforçar nossa posição de que o modelo deve ser multi-stakeholder, um modelo que o Brasil adota há quase 20 anos através do nosso comitê gestor da internet. President Dilma told me to reinforce this idea that the internet, the governance uh, must be a multi-stakeholder. Também defendemos a universalidade que assegura o desenvolvimento social e humano e a construção de sociedades inclusivas e não discriminatórias. We are also for the universality that ensures social and human development and the construction of inclusive, non-discriminatory societies. Diversidade cultural sem imposição de crenças, costumes e valores. Cultural diversity which no, with no imposition of creeds, habits or values. E neutralidade da rede, ao respeitar apenas critérios técnicos e éticos tornando inadmissível restrições por motivos políticos, comerciais, religiosos ou de qualquer outra natureza. And neutrality in the web by respecting only ethical and technical aspects, thus making any kind of restrictions inadmissible, be it political, commercial, religious or any others. No Brasil, ao longo de quase 20 anos, temos experiências muito positivas em como lidar com as questões mais relevantes no manejo da internet. O CGI é um exemplo disso, com participação do governo, das empresas 
e da sociedade civil. Over the last uh, 20 years, Brazil has had a very positive a very positive experience regarding the most relevant issues of internet management. The Brazilian Committee for Internet Management is a world reference as an open model where government, private sector and academic community sit together side by side. Por esses e outros motivos, podemos afirmar que estamos prontos para um diálogo de alto nível com vistas a desenhar um novo modelo para a governança da internet no mundo. For this reason, we can say that we are ready for a high level dialogue aiming to design a new model for internet governance in the world. Desafios globais requerem um tratamento global. Precisamos ampliar nosso campo de ação e trazer mais atores e visões de mundo para este debate. World challenges uh, demand world solutions, so we have to bring more players to the debate. Para tanto, propomos realizar no primeiro semestre de 2014 no Brasil um grande encontro sobre a governança da internet. Therefore, we are to host in Brazil for the first semester next year a big event to debate internet governance. Nossa proposta é colocar lado a lado líderes mundiais, o setor empresarial, a sociedade civil e os governos nacionais, já desde a organização desse encontro até a construção das definições que conseguirmos alcançar. We will bring together world leaders, the private sector and every other interested party in order to design an agenda of the new principles for the internet governance. Acreditamos ser possível sair de lá com compromissos claros e uma agenda comum bem definida que aponte para ações concretas a serem de de desenvolvidas por todos nós. We aim to reach clear commitments and to establish a well-defined common agenda pointing to concrete actions to be developed by all of us. O Brasil traz para Bali o melhor de sua disposição e capacidade de diálogo. Esperamos aproveitar esta oportunidade para reforçar os laços da comunidade internacional da internet e apontar um horizonte melhor para todos. Brazil brings to Bali its best and uh, we, we have uh, to take the opportunity of this meeting to set new standards for the internet government uh, governance. Que os próximos dias sejam bem sucedidos e que saiamos daqui melhor do que che chegamos. Obrigado. I hope uh, these days are successful and that we leave this event better than when we arrive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now we move forward to the next panelist and would like to invite Mr. Masahiro Yoshisaki, Vice Minister for Policy Coordination, the Ministry of Internet Affairs and Communication of Japan, to deliver his contributions. The floor is yours, Mr. Masahiro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Yoshizaki, Japan. First of all, I'd like to thank the government of Indonesia for hosting this forum. I also commend the tremendous effort of the IGF Secretariat members and the supporters who are organizing this forum. It's my great pleasure to attend this forum for the first time in two years since Kenya Forum. The global number of individuals using the Internet nowadays is about double that of 2005. Furthermore, development of mobile communications, such as the spread of mobile phones and smartphones, is tremendous. The development of mobile communications make it easy and offers diversified ways in which to access the Internet. As a result, this development will expand the volume of use of the Internet on a world scale in the future. It's reported that the Internet has contributed 21% of economic growth of advanced countries for the past five years. Coupled with development of mobile communications, 
as well as the facilitation of the use of application of the Internet. The further spread of uh, use of the Internet keeps economic growth expanding on a world scale. The chance to be a part of this growth is open equally to developing countries and developed countries. This will result in the increase of the quality of use of the Internet as a basis for the social and economic activities. Moreover, it's important to ensure the free flow of information in order to maximize the benefit that people can obtain from the Internet. The free flow of a wide variety of content in terms of culture and language can lead to dynamism in innovation, which is essential for this growth. In addition, in order for people to safely utilize the Internet, it's also important to ensure both security and privacy. Therefore, we have promoted research and development and internal, international collaboration for early response to counter the threat of cyber attacks. We also have taken necessary measures to protect the privacy of uh, smartphone users. As I expressed up until now, in light of the expansion of the volume of use of the Internet on a world scale, as well as the increase of the quality of use of the Internet, on the basis of social and economic activities. Construction of a safe environment for use of the Internet and highly transparent and reliable management of Internet resources, what we call Internet governance, because uh, become increasingly important year by year. This is very important point. Concerning internet governance, it is necessary to consider a more specific way of governance. This consideration should be made not from the view of an individual or an individual business anymore, but from the view of humanity and the wider growth in some cases. It may be a mechanism to ensure accountability and transparency of ICANN at a high level. In other cases, it may be the enhancement of GAC function. In order to achieve this, cross-border cooperation and government industry academia cooperation is essential. Value of each stakeholder in each country should be closer. It will be more important to make fundamental effort to have a common view of the global community. One of the ways to effectively realize such an internet governance system may be by way of multi-stakeholders. In 2005, the United Nations General Assembly will make an overall review of the implementation of WSIS outcomes this decade. In this content, IGF will continue to play a large role in the future. We need to find a more specific way of Internet governance through deepening international discussion and dialogue between various stakeholders, such as governments, business sectors, academia, civil society, 
and so on. Japan will make an active contribution to these activities. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Masahiro Yoshisaki, Your Excellency, for your valuable contributions. Now we go to the next panelist from the People's Republic of China. I would like to invite MS Liu Duo, Vice President of China Academy of Telecoms and Research, Ministry of Industry and IT. Ms. Liu Duo, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Distinguished the, uh, Minister Tifatu Zembring, distinguished the delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. At the outside, please allow me, on behalf of the Chinese delegation, to extend our sincere thanks to the Indonesian government for convening this high-level high leaders meeting during the ACE IGF. It's my great honor to present and exchange the views on the important issues of the sustainable development of the internet. Today, the rapid development of information and communication technology plays an important role in promoting the economic and the social development, improving the welfare of the peoples, and ensuring the national security. China attaches great importance to the development of the Internet and regards it as an important tool of the construction of national information networks, economic development, technical innovation, and the improvement of people's life. Since joining the global Internet family in the early 1990s, China has contributed to building an open, free, and cooperative a cooperative internet. Now China has become the country which holds the largest population of internet users and the largest scale of internet networks. It has made ever-growing progress in internet infrastructure, network applications, techno technological innovations, policy and regulatory enabling environment, and the mature internet industry. By the end of the June of this year, the number of Internet users in China has reached 591 million, with a penetration rate of 44.1%, and the number of registered websites of 2.95 million. The Chinese companies, such as Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba, Sina, and Sohu, have been listed as the world's top 10, 20 largest Internet companies. We wish to thank the Indonesian government for setting the theme of the high-level leaders meeting as global multi-stakeholder collaboration for achieving a safe, secure, and tolerant cyberspace, enabling growth and sustainable development through cyber ethics. This theme follows closely with today's world development and shows a common perspective of the world to utilize the Internet as a tool to support the world peace, development, and progress. I would like to take this, uh, this opportunity to elaborate our views on this very important theme, especially on how to develop and utilize the Internet. Firstly, Emphasis shall be made on the ICT infrastructure development. Since 1990s, China has recognized the importance of the ICT infrastructure to the economic and the social development, and has been taking initiatives such as connecting village via telecommunication projects to extend the ICTs to all the administrative villages throughout China with accomplished aim of providing telephone service at a village level and internet broadband service at the country level, content level. China has also been making efforts in improving the internet bandwidth with initiative as a national broadband spending, speeding up project to provide 4 megabit plus broadband service to about 50% broadband users. 
It is estimated that by the year of 2020, the fixed broadband penetration will reach 70 percent, and the mobile broadband 85 percent in China. Secondly, more efforts has been put on the internet innovation and the information consumption. Social network applications such as Weibo by Sina, WeChat by Tencent are developing fast in China and have attracted more than 300 million users, which make them the world's largest social network applications. The electronic commerce also has got rapid development in China with more than 240 million online banking users and 244 million online payment users. Information consumption is expected to expand in China by more than 20 uh, percent each year, from uh, 2012's 1,072 trillion RMB to 3.2 trillion RMB in two,、uh, 2015. Information and communication technology has become the fundamental and the strategic pillar application in supporting the upgraded version of China's whole industry. Thirdly. We should strive to build a secure, safe, and tolerant ICT networks. In China, measures have been taken in such areas as the skilled key network elements protection and the development of standards to enhance the protection capacity and to guarantee the security of the network. The self-discipline of internet industries, advocated by the China Internet Association, also contributes to build a safe internet environment. Building, including antivirus, self-discipline convention among the network operators, the domain registries and the registers, the search engine providers, the network security vendors, and other internet stakeholders. The initiative is on combating the、uh, Trojan Sea botnets, malware,、uh, phishing sites, and the regulations on protecting the privacy of the users have both great potential on building the trust of the consumers and the credibility of the internet environments. Ladies and gentlemen, internet is a global interconnected network. The more cooperation, the more progress. In the past eight years, IGF has played an important role in facilitating the exchange of views, discussion of issues, and promoting cooperation related to internet governance among all stakeholders. We call on all parties to make full use of IGF platform to exchange views on how to implement the multilateral. Uh, democratic and transparent principles formulated by World Summit on the Information Society, which encourages governments to play a greater role in the internet governance and to ensure that each country has equal rights and seeing on the issues related to critical internet resources. We hope that through our joint efforts, the internet can make the world more peaceful, brighter, and more civilized. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Yudo. <coughs> Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, now we will continue our next panelist from the Republic of Azerbaijan. I would like to invite Mr. Amir Velisada, Deputy Minister of Communication and Information Technology of the Republic of Azerbaijan, to give his contributions. Mr. Felisada, please. Distinguished ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the government of Indonesia, especially Mr. Tifatu, Minister of Communication and Information Technologies, for organizing this meeting. It's my great honor today to de deliver remarks on behalf of the Azerbaijan delegation. Our today's meeting is held in framework of IGF Bali gathering, and the main subject is a safe, secure, tolerant cyberspace and cyber ethics. This event gives, gives us the opportunity for fruitful discussions 
on these very important issues and the, to share Azerbaijan experience that went through enormous success pace of the period of last years. I would like to note that 2013 years was declared as a ICT year by the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan. It's not accidental that Azerbaijan stood eight of 144 countries in the ranking for government's achievements in ICT. Night for importance of ICT in the government's view for the future. And 50th, fifth, uh, and uh, sorry, and uh, 20 for the internet affordability according the World Economic Forum's Global Information Technology Reports 2013. Besides that, the launching of the first telecommunication satellite, Other Space One, was the most remarkable event of ICT year. ICT sector in the Republic of Azerbaijan gives a clear picture of the high progress of the country. We have achieved 10 0.5% growth in ICT sector in the first half of year, and society continued to benefit from broader application of e-government, increasing internet and mobile penetration. Simultaneously, Azerbaijan is working on several international and local projects and strategies for the future development of ICT sector in country and region. Let me name some of the primary ICT strategies and projects. For example, Azerbaijan 2020, the vision of the future development concept, national strategy on information society, development of broadband internet services, developing capacity for e-participation, Europe Persia Express Gateway Project, establishing IT University, High Tech Park, state IT fund and regional data center and uh, cyber security center and particularly uh, transliteration information superhighway TASIM project and establishment of the Eurasian Connectivity Alliance Eureka. Availing this opportunity, I would like to thank all countries who supported the TASIM initiative in UN General Assembly uh, 68 session, which concluded with the adoption of resolution on establishing Eurasian Connectivity Alliance in September 2013. We believe that not only our country, but the whole region will benefit from Eureka. We consider the TASIM project as a major regional initiative aiming at creation of transnational fiber optic backbone targeting primarily the countries of Eurasia and accelerating both information flow, flow from Western Europe to China. In this regard, we look forward to your ideas as how ICT tool can be harnessed to advance sustainable development. Excellencies, colleagues, in addition, I would like to cordially invite you all to the International Conference on Cybercrime Partnership, Problems and Perspective that will be held in Bakutel 2013, annual uh, international ICT exhibition and conference on 2nd and 5th December. During this conference, we will have a unique opportunity to considerable uh, con contribute to the global development we are intense discussions on challenging cybercrime and cybersecurity issues. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Excellencies, Mr. Felisada. Ladies and gentlemen, after hearing from government perspective, now let's listen to the part practical insights and ideas from the private sectors. Firstly, we would like to invite Mr. Patrick Ryan, Public Policy and Government Region Seminar 
Senior Counsel Free Express and International Relations at Google Incorporated to deliver his comments. Mr. Patrick Ryan, please. Ladies and gentlemen, if one thing I can assure you, I'm not Patrick. Patrick is sitting right there. <laughs> um, good, good afternoon, selamat siang, dan salam sejahtera, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank my colleagues at the Indonesian government and the multi-stakeholders community, I see Abji, Haifos, Pandi, ICT Watch, just to name a few, that has made this even possible for the opportunity to be here today and for, to, and for hosting this event. It is a source of great pride that my country is embracing the IGF, and I am certain that this will be a very engaging week. The diverse representatives that are here today and who have been invited to speak demonstrate Indonesia's commitment to the multi-stakeholder model, to democracy, and to open debate and discussion. I am proud to be here and to have the opportunity to speak on behalf of Google. There are three topics that I would like to address. The first topic is the one that ties with the ethic themes, that is surveillance. This topic is, as they say, the elephant in the room. It doesn't need to be. We should be able to discuss surveillance, individual freedoms, and civil liberty this week, and at every conference without taboo. I should disclose that surveillance is not my area of specialty. I joined Google only a few weeks, a few months ago, and came here from the Indonesian Trade Ministry. However, I've learned more about surveillance in the last six months than I have in the past 20 years. I've learned in recent months that surveillance is not limited to any single government. Although the press is currently focusing on the role of the U.S. government in the surveillance, this is by no means limited to the U.S. government. All of the internet stakeholders, governments, private companies, civil society, and the technical community must look inward to figure out what is the right answer and how to strike the right balance on this matter. We hope that the discussions about striking the balance of protecting users, civil liberties, and the government desire to protect its citizens can happen in the balanced global context. The second important point is turning on another trend that we are seeing in the global policy space, one that is sometimes related to surveillance, but not always. I am referring to the increased desires of governments globally to require that data be stored locally, sometimes it's being called data localization. This is a global issue that affects everybody, and it is a trend that we are seeing around the world. For example, there has been recently been discussions of creating a Schengen zone for data, or multiple Schengen zones around the world. For those that don't know what Schengen Zone is, it is an agreement between countries in Europe to allow for the free flow of people and goods across borders, and the free flow of people was a major historical accomplishment. The Iron Curtain is gone, but at one point, it cut right through the middle of many countries. Take an example of Berlin. At one point, the entire city was literally encircled with a physical wall that prevented flows of people, informations, and commerce. It severed families and relationships from each other. When the, citizenship, when the citizens in East Berlin had enough, they destroyed the wall. 